is Ree here. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate all of you. Om Kleen Kali Ke Namaha. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing. It really helps me a lot. Don't forget to check out my website, paradoxastrology.com. Book your consultation today. I can help you with anything. And if you would like more exclusive occult videos that I don't post on YouTube, consider subscribing to my Patreon. It also helps to support this channel. Okay, let's get into this really quick video about the number 33. And it's really important when you're studying numerology that you understand the planets. I've noticed that's where a lot of people fail. I've also noticed people saying that they don't believe in astrology, but they're doing numerology. Please understand that these are the same. You're actually doing astrology when you're doing numerology. You don't realize it. There is what is called a yantra, but in the West, we usually call it, or in occult systems, they call it a magic square. They say that the magic square originated, I believe, the 1600s, which isn't true. Actually, these are what are called yantras, which come from Hinduism, which is the oldest system of spirituality. So these yantras, or magic squares, have a whole bunch of numbers in them, and the numbers add up to a specific number, which equals the planet. So the Saturn Yantra adds up to the number 33. This is significant because we see a lot of Saturn worship in the world, in elite societies, in secret societies, and even in religions as well. But I want to remind you that when you worship demigods or when you worship planets as gods, even though they are gods, for material gain, you will get the material gain but you won't gain enlightenment. So the whole point of worshiping something is to gain enlightenment. Now the gods can give you material prosperity as well. So there's no reason to be worshiping the planets without God is what I'm saying, because you'll end up taking a lower birth and coming back here over and over again. And the whole point of here is to ascend and develop your consciousness. So this is why a lot of people who are worshiping the planets are not at a higher conscious. This comes from the Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna tells us this. So 33 is a manifestation of Saturn energy. Rahu is related to all numbers that add up to six. So this is why we always say that Rahu acts like Saturn because Rahu and Saturn are both bringers of karma. When we have the eclipses, it has to do with Rahu and Ketu. And Rahu and Ketu eclipse it that's when our karma goes overload and then all these events start to occur. But Rahu is also the direction that we are supposed to go in this life, the karmic direction. And Saturn is the karma that we must face in this lifetime. And the stories of, I won't get into the stories of the planets, but there is also a connection there. It's interesting to note also the number 11 is connected to Rahu as well. But 33 is the Saturn side of Rahu. So it's the energy of Rahu and Saturn together. But what's good about it is it can symbolize new things, new beginnings. And it gives a lot of material abundance as well because Saturn amplifies the material world. It gives us the material world. To be in the entertainment industry, you must be a part of certain sororities. When you're a part of those, they help you get in to the higher positions in life. We have Skull and Bones, for example and the other one is Alpha Phi Alpha. That's why we always see the occult or the Illuminati, for example, a lot of symbolism and masonry about the 3-3. Three, three. It's interesting to note that in Freemasonry, there's a depiction and there's a picture. I have an entire video about that, that Rahu is Baal on my channel, but the picture that we have, it points to Capricorn. And Capricorn energy is also the energy of Saturn and Rahu together because we have Shavahista, Nakshatra, which is a portion of that zodiac sign, which is ruled by Rahu. Shavahista is ruled by Rahu and Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. And then this ends up being the government and people at very high positions. So it's very interesting that it points to that. And it's also showing us, we also see symbolism with the 33 as well. So these are people who want to control the material plane and get to the heights of the material plane. And that's how you would do it. Saturn is also having control over it. So when you have these two energies together, it's highly ambitious and it can bring a lot of 
material wealth and growth on the material plane. Capricorn is the material plane. It's also, these numbers are the bridge between the spiritual realm and the material realm. Rahu is considered a demon. It's a asura. And then Saturn relating to, well, some would say Satan. So we have a demon and we have Satan here together. And yes, that sounds bad, but there's conscious and there's unconscious sides to both of them. So there's good and there's bad in both of them. It's how you use it. But many are using it just to gain and control, gain material prosperity and control others. Another thing that's interesting in Alpha Phi Alpha, I'm going to show you a picture here of the symbolism they do when they see each other or in ritual dances. And it is exactly the shape of Rahu or Ketu. So this is the deeper meaning of the number 33. Also, Saturn and Rahu make up the sign of Aquarius. Aquarius is the energy of groups, alliances, scientific inventions, and things of that nature. So that's just a little bit about the number 33. I thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you, and I'll see you in the next one.